Hey guys, thanks for tuning in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Echo Power PS500. This is very similar to the Jackery 500. It's got essentially a 500 watt hour battery and a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter. But we're going to see how this stands up to the other 500 watt solar generators that are on the market as well just to see uh, some of the cool features about this. If you're new to the channel, I really appreciate you watching. And you're going to want to go ahead and click that subscribe button. Click the bell, that way you get notified when I put out more content like this. As you can see from behind me, do a lot of reviews on emergency equipment. I've tested many different things in the past and found out that even though their marketing was great, their product was horrible. And that's why I do it, to help you guys know if this stuff is actually any good. So thank you again for tuning in. You want to stick with me to the end to find out all of the information on this. And so let's go ahead and get into this PS500 from Echo Power. So thanks again guys for tuning in. Uh, this unit technically has a 462 watt hour battery capacity. It is lithium ion or lithium NMC. And that's one of the ways it stays really, really lightweight. It's actually lighter than the Jackery 500. And we'll get into that here in a minute. And it does have a pure sine wave 500 watt inverter with about 120 watt solar input. Now, Echo Power was actually nice enough to send this unit out. So they're not sponsoring the video. They're not paying me for anything, but they did send this out for my honest review. So I just want you guys to know about that relationship. I'm just gonna be reviewing this head to head against some other units and see how this does on its own. And if it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. And it's just that simple. With this unit, they also sent out this 100 watt solar panel. And now this thing is actually pretty cool. Most foldable solar panels tend to be pretty heavy. And that's because they're actually still using two 50 watt panels that have tempered glass and the aluminum frame. And this still has the aluminum frame, but this is technically like a flexible panel that has this ETF uh, bubble finish. And I really love the ETF finish. You do not want to get flexible solar panels that have the PET finish. Basically, the PET plastic is very much like the plastic that's on a disposable water bottle. After even six months to a year of being used, it'll tend to discolor, it'll even flake and start to break down. The ETF E finish is designed to last for over 20 years. And because of this special uh, bumpy surface on here, it tends to make it very scratch resistant, uh, very much like the tempered glass. Now, the other things that are automatically included is I got this, I believe it's a 15 foot MC4 to barrel adapter. I don't know what size barrel plug this is, but this is how you actually recharge the PS500. It obviously comes with a wall charger, but it also has this special adapter. Now this goes straight onto the back of the solar panel here. You can see there's this large Anderson plug, and I can plug this directly to this, and this is designed to actually recharge a car battery. So if you have this in your vehicle, and for some reason you killed your battery in your car, then this is a really good way to actually be able to recharge it up. And there's actually a PWM charge controller on the back here to make sure that the proper voltage is going in. But they also sent these uh, MC4 branch connectors. This is a two to one connector. And then of course you're gonna get uh, the user manuals. Now, luckily on this panel, you actually have the option to use the PWM charge controller or not. Basically you can see here, I have a direct cable to this uh, large Anderson plug and then a direct cable to this MC4 connector. Now this MC4 connector is actually just plugged into this box, so it's very easy to just take this and undo the MC4 connectors, and now I can just take this set of MC4 connectors, plug my cables right into it, or even just use this right here. Uh, you can get an MC4 cable, like a 12 gauge or a 10 gauge, and actually connect that in between these, so that way this can be far outside wherever you need it, and this can be inside charging up no problem. And another cool feature is that it does have these legs that prop out. Now, one of the other downsides to using panels like this is they're really not designed to be connected in series with a bunch of them. Normally, as you've seen with like the Titan Solar Generator, which is the number one solar generator, the one I usually recommend, we series up to 2,000 or even 4,000 watts of solar panels onto it. But this panel is really rated to 60 volts of inline connected voltage, which is really pretty low. If, so if you're just looking for a 100 watt panel, then this one's actually really cool, but we need to actually take this outside so you can see the real results of how much power it truly makes. So make sure you keep watching because we're gonna get into that here in just a second. This unit here only has two AC outlets and that's really okay because you have to keep in mind, this is a really small solar generator. This is gonna be more commonly used for just lightweight portable power for running like a laptop or maybe recharging a drone, camera batteries, or maybe just uh, like a DC fridge on a road trip. That's what this is gonna be really, really good for. Now it does have this light here on the front and it is pretty bright. 
Now, this is really going to be a contender for the Jackery 500. The Jackery 500 is pretty much the gold standard when it comes to this size solar generator. Now, it too has a flashlight here on the side. It's much, much dimmer than this one on here. But the biggest thing is this only has one AC outlet. And so one of the bigger differences is that this has three USB plugs as well, but it also has a quick charge 60 watt output USB-C adapter here. So if you're gonna be charging anything like uh, drone batteries or anything like that, that's one of the faster ways to get it charged up rather than just using normal USB here. But one thing that the Jackery has that the Echo Power PS500 does not have is a screen. The only real information you get is by pushing the power button real quick and it gives you a number of bars so you can see how much battery is left in this. And for me, I just, I hate that. I really, really appreciate a screen. Even a simple screen like this on the Jackery 500, it just at least tells me real easy what the battery percentage is at, how much is going in, how much is going out. That's really all I need to know. Now, one of the things I did find a little interesting is as I was reading the user manual and it goes over charging, there's a different charge parameter that's in the user manual versus what's on the front here. Because here it says 19 volts and five amps. And that's just below 100 watts because volts times amps equals watts. And so right here in the solar input section of this tech specifications, it says 14 to 25 volts, a max of 120 watts. So that's enough talking about all this. Let's go ahead and get into the test. The first thing we're going to do is put 500 watts draw on this because that is the max output of this. And we're going to see exactly how long it can actually run 500 watts without stopping. minutes not good at all so if we consider it's a 462 watt hour battery we were drawing right at about 500 watts pretty much the whole time and so if you're using 500 watts off of a 500 watt battery in the course of an hour it's going to use 500 watt hours it is empty it must not have overheated it's definitely warm the housing is warm the yeah the, not a single fan turned on in this so it doesn't seem like there's any fans in this for cooling because this definitely got worked really, really hard. So that is a really, really big concern. Uh, that is definitely not an issue that we ran into things with like the Jackery or even the Sungzu 500. That would be my big concern is if you're going to use a heavy draw on this for an extended period of time, it's probably not gonna get anywhere close to using that full 462 watt hours of battery. So I'd like to do another test where we do this at a low state of output and see what happens. So actually before we start charging this up by solar, I want to see what the actual battery capacity is of this. So I'm gonna put like a 200 watt load on it. I get the feeling that this isn't a 462 watt hour battery because it should have run much longer at that 500 watt draw. And so we're gonna put like a 200 watt draw, something close to that and see how long this goes. That'll give us a better idea of what the actual battery capacity is of this. So with using the kilowatt meter, it's kind of annoying having these upside down. We see we're drawing right near 190 watts, but I wanted to show you this. This is something that's real interesting that it kind of like flickers in order to be able to turn them on. Just keep that in mind with this Echo Power. So just to give a quick update, this has been running for just over two hours. In case you didn't know, you can push this purple button on the kilowatt meter and it'll show you not only the total kilowatt hours, but also the amount of time it's been running. Basically 380 watts. We are flashing here on the battery. This has got to be really, really close to empty. And so we'll just see how much it can do until it's completely empty. Okay, so this just turned off at two hours and 13 minutes. So for two hours and 13 minutes, it ran that uh, it was about 188 watts. So what we can determine from that is the actual C rate. So basically all we have to do is take 188 divided into 462, and that gives us a 0.4 discharge C rate. Uh, C rates is something I don't normally talk about, but a C rate basically means that how fast you're discharging a battery. 
So if you have 100 watt hour battery and you discharge it at 100 watts, that would be one C rate. So when we originally did the test, it was a 500 watt drain on a 462 watt hour battery. So it was like 1.1 was the C rate. The final number that I saw on here was 420 watt hours or 0.42 kilowatt hours. So that makes sense after going through the inverter and having to convert 12 volt power all the way into 110 or 120 volt power. This definitely does have that 462 watt hour battery but it is not capable of running that 500 watts for an extended period of time like close to 45 minutes or something like that so let's go ahead and get the solar panel on this and see how well it charges up okay so I've got the panel here and I've got my panel cables now one thing is I need to go directly from this smaller junction box with these cables make sure you're not coming off the cable that has the charge controller here and let's go inside. So got my solar cables here. Go ahead and check the voltage here real quick. 22.5 volts. This cable here wasn't long enough to reach all the way outside, so I added my own solar cables. And now we'll go ahead and plug this in. I'm gonna turn this on first just to be sure. Plug it in, and I don't know if it's charging. The battery light is just flashing. So let's try this. And add this uh, watt meter. Now these are custom made watt meters. They're really, really nice. They're a little bit more on the pricey side, but they can handle the most amperage and most voltage. So this says, yep, getting 22.53 volts. If you're interested in a watt meter like this, keep in mind they are only rated up to 65 volts. You can't put more than that on them, otherwise you will fry them. And then let's try putting it in and see if we can get a load here. There it goes. Okay, 70.8. Okay, it's fluctuating. Quite a bit it was i got up to 72 now it's at 45. okay so the wattage here is fluctuating quite a bit it was up to 72 looks like it's coming back up there must have been a little cloud that came in the, went in the way this is the disadvantage of not having a screen as you can't tell what's going in so right now this is blinking kind of fast on this battery indicator when i unplug this now it starts blinking slowly it's not much of a difference though and so you got to keep that in mind is you don't really know uh, real easy how fast it's charging. So I would definitely recommend having one of these uh, watt meters. So I'm gonna leave this on here for quite a while and we'll just see how much it charges up in the rest of the day here. Okay, I wanna do another test here real quick. I've got one rigid 100 solar panel from Powered Portable Solar. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here and see what kind of power we're getting. So right now, getting 89.6. You can see that there. Definitely getting a lot more out of the Rigid 100 panel. And so I'll just show you here, I got the fold-out panel from Echo Power, and then my Rigid 100 panel. I just got it propped up so it's about at the same angle. So that way we get a fair comparison, and the Rigid 100 is definitely making more. But that's pretty typical. I have found these Rigid 100s to be really the best panels I've ever used. And it's not a perfectly clear sunny day, so I'm really, really happy with those results. Right, and I'm going to do one more quick test. I've got both of those Rigid 100 panels connected in parallel. It's really hard to see through the window, but I've got the cabling there. I just want to see if this will actually work. This is definitely exceeding the 5 amp rating. I would not recommend doing this, and so let's see what we get here. Yeah, we can actually see here we're getting pretty much the exact same output. It was downgrading it to 4.66 amps at 19.1 volts still getting 89 watts. So it doesn't help to add the extra 100 watts, but that's why we do these tests. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep charging this up and we'll see where we are in a little bit. So in the end, the PS500, I didn't get a full charge today and that's fine, uh, but basically the weather is not gonna be good for the next like two weeks. So I'll have to do the rest of this by wall charger. But I was able to get up to two bars on this and I just really wish this had a screen. I could easily see it used for like a DC fridge, all those things that I mentioned before. This is not something you're gonna use in an emergency. None of these here would you use for really an emergency. And so with that being said, I think I could recommend this if you're doing low output. But doing a high capacity draw at 500 watts it was total garbage. It was not good at all for the output. It should have been way higher. Now, the Bluetooth speaker is just kind of a whatever feature to me. It's not something that's really important to me. And so if it's something that you'd like, that's definitely something that none of these other units have. And one thing I really found interesting is there was never, ever once a fan that turned on in this. Similar with the Jackery 500 and the Bluetti AC50, uh, I rarely, rarely, rarely ever hear the fans on this. The Sungzu 500 does have better fans. Uh, it does 
does actually blow the air and so that is a little bit more comforting to me and these all are kind of similar in price um pricing's hard because it fluctuates you know people come out with more reviews and then companies change pricing but usually this is the cheapest and then you know up to the more expensive i would probably go with something else over the aco power simply because it doesn't have a high output capacity but that being said, if you're not doing high output capacity, then it works just fine. So there you have it, the PS500 from EcoPower. It's okay, not amazing, uh, definitely could have been better. So maybe that's something they can work on in the future. But in the meantime, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me all the way to the end of this video. I know my videos can sometimes be pretty long and I appreciate that you actually stick with me all the way to the end. If you have any questions at all, please email me at info at poweredportablesolar.com or just shoot me a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer your questions. If you found this video helpful, make sure to click the like button, click the subscribe and bell. That way you get notified of when I put up more content. As you can see, I do a lot of solar generator reviews, I'm gonna be doing a lot of other preparedness stuff. So you want to be subscribed if you're interested in emergency preparedness. Thanks again guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it and we'll see y'all next time.